23. We bring our love to thee. O wounded feet, O famished eyes, is there no healing anodyne, no spell to make the way worn wise, no hint of the divine? But if indeed we too might bear the dying of the blessed one, but if indeed we too might wear the life of God's dear Son, O oh, would we, could we choose to miss for loveliest bud of garden born, one blow of reed, one stab from this our Saviour's crown of thorn? There is a touch, there is a spell, there is a healing anodyne. Not far art thou, Emmanuel, from troubled child of thine. O master of the wounded feet, from whose sharp crown the red dew fell, and would I walk mid meadows sweet, crowned with gold asphodel? I suppose that in the lives of all our Lord's lovers there are memories of an hour when earth and time and sense fell far away, and they saw only Calvary, felt only love, love that burned as nothing save love that is fire can burn, and were conscious of a thirst, one only, one consuming thirst, Thou, O Lord, art the thing that I long for. For what are all these glimpses, these unfoldings, but the merest nothings in comparison with that for which we wait? You meaner beauties of the night, that poorly satisfy our sight, more by your number than your light. You common people of the skies, what are you when the moon shall rise? Still, that starry hour was good, and in earlier days the lover might have returned marked with a stigmata, a secret pain that would have throbbed in unison with his, in foot and hand and side, while life on earth did last, or so indeed it would have seemed to one so fused in love with him. But now our prayer is rather for what the stigmata signifies, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. That is the sum of our prayer. And yet something comes and draws him very near, when there is pain in a part of the body, which he in his own sacred body gave to pain for us, though indeed no part was without urgent pain that day. I have told of how a verse in the poem, Stigmata, came close to me in the beginning. Now, as the year draws near to its end, another verse from the same poem carries another word. Must I be wounded in the busy hands that labor to fulfill industrious love's demands within the circle of thy sovereign will? And can it fall within that will to let thy child from all repayment of its debt Yea, this must be, if thou wouldst work for me, thus only can my seal be set on man. Those who have had that peculiarly piercing pain, which is as though a nail were driven through the palm, know how close it can draw the heart into a tender fellowship with him, whose two hands were pierced, not as though, but in awful fact, by very nails of iron. There is a kind of solemn joy in coming in the flesh anywhere near the suffering flesh of our Lord. As a child, I remember the thought of his divinity so far overwhelmed the thought of his humanity that it was impossible to realize that he suffered being tempted, and Calvary, though unspeakably awful, was so greatly overweighed by the thought of his spiritual pain that the physical passed a little out of sight. In a sense, this is as it should be. The holy, pure, and beautiful spirit of our Saviour suffered so much more than we can understand that words fall off, afraid to touch so profound a mystery. But there was also the sensitive flesh born of a woman. There cannot be a pang in our flesh that was not, and sharper far, in that sacred body on the tree." And so in a new way, as we newly understand even only a little more of what he bore for us, we draw near to him. Sometimes in Donavour, we, who dearly love the little children about us, and the older ones too, 
have looked up from some engrossing work to see a child beside us waiting quietly, and when, with a welcoming hand held out to the Tamil, I have come, we have asked, for what? Thinking, perhaps, of something to be confessed or wanted, the answer has come back, just to love you. So do we come, Lord Jesus. We have no service to offer now. We do not come to ask for anything, not even for guidance. We come just to love thee. Not even for guidance. Three of our family were with me when the briar bush story began. One drove off as quickly as Ford could go over a rough road to get help. Another sat curled up uncomfortably for what seemed a long time, trying to make me comfortable, and the third stood guard, gently but firmly persuading the friendly crowd of neighbours, each of whom had a pet remedy to recommend, to leave the twisted foot untouched. This gentle one has been my helper in preparing our rose for others, for the poor rose had to go into typescript, and when you are typing from penciled writing in a foreign language, curious things may evolve. So, as the pages were typed, it was most helpful to have her go through them. She stopped at the words, not even for guidance, a typing slip, but no, they were what I had written. And I told her how, for a time at least, till one could begin to serve a little again, there was no need to ask for guidance. The ill are the guided, not the guides. It had been a new experience, but the more you crush the leaves of the sweet briar, the more it offers its fragrance, and I had found, as I told her, unexpected sweetness in this new leaf. It is sometimes very good to ask nothing from our Lord, but to come just to love Him. There was a day in our fellowship story when nothing seemed to matter, but only that in the grief which was upon us we should turn to Him. It was the day of this prayer song. O Lord of love and Lord of pain, who by the bitter cross dost teach us how to measure gain and how to measure loss, whom, seeing not our hearts adore, we bring our love to thee. And where thou art, Lord, evermore, would we thy servants be. Will not those who are called to suffer let this comfort them? To them it is given to understand, more than ever before, of what love has endured. In the pain, and very sensibly when it is over, and body, soul, and spirit lie back spent, there will be a sense of the clasping, the enfolding, of a love that passes knowledge. And though we can do nothing, the body being tied and bound, the spirit which no bonds can bind, can bring its love to him.